Um, so thank you to those of you that have, have made it here this morning. I think we, we suffer a little bit from being first slot of the day, which was always fairly predictable. I think a few people choose these things to uh, stay in bed for an extra half an hour. So thanks to those of you that have, have uh, made, the, uh, made the efforts to, to come along today. Um, my name's Emily Chadwick. I'm Managing Director of Marketing Logic. And, and for those of you that don't know, I see a few familiar faces around and about the place. For those of you that, that don't know, Marketing Logic has, has spent, you know, the team has spent the last decade uh, working on helping clients to make their marketing activities more efficient. So, so working with the clients to understand what are the processes that you go through, what are the steps that you follow, how do you engage with each other to execute your marketing activity. And, and over the last probably six to, to eight years, that's become really about how do we look at those processes, help clients understand, A, how they can get things to market more quickly, and, and B, how they can do that at a lower cost or, or do more for, for less money. Um, and, and, and as we've, we've moved towards, um, towards helping make that change, technology now has to play a very important part in facilitating those, those new processes. And, and so we've spent a number of years as a, an independent consultancy in the market, working with a range of different vendors that provide digital asset management platforms, marketing resource management platforms that help clients to bring those marketing processes to life through a technology platform. Um, and we made a, a, a decision as a, as a business to align ourselves with one particular product, um, and, and that's Brandmaker. And you'll see that, that the Marketing Logic team are, are here as a, as a partner um, and, a, and a reseller on the, on the Brandmaker stand today. So Brandmaker are one of only six uh, world leaders, uh, according to Gartner, in the space of, of marketing resource management. Um, and, and I don't want to talk to you today about their product, but I think it's important that you understand that, that perspective, that when I talk to you today, I'm coming from a, a point of view that, that understands the marketing world and, and the processes and, and, and the steps that are followed in, in that environment and how to make that more efficient, but then also understands the technology and, and what's important in terms of using technology in the right way within a marketing environment. I'm very fortunate today to be stood here with, with my uh, client and, and comrade, Mr. Paul Walder from, from Volvo Cars. So, Paul, if you'd like to tell the guys a little bit about yourself. Certainly. Uh, good morning to the brave few of you who have joined us this morning. Great to see you. My name is Paul Walder. I work for Volvo Cars. I'm part of the uh, global marketing function for Volvo. I've been in the global marketing function now for five years. My particular responsibilities are around media and properties, so that's media strategy, looking at media sponsorships, product placement, and critically looking at how we manage our content, how we have an efficient and effective control of our content so that we can distribute it and our markets and their dealers in the markets as well can utilize them in an optimal way. Thank you. So I think. You know, what we're here to talk to you about today is it's a fairly bold statement in, in terms of how can MRM, this marketing resource management software, really fuel marketing as, as the client powerhouse. And when Paul and I were talking about, you know, what, what should we make today's session about, it was very much the feeling that, that now is a really exciting time for marketing. So we wanted to come up with something that reflected that as a, as a title. And so if we look at, at the marketing environment as, as it stands today, we've, we've got this kind of visual here, but marketing have always been at the, the hub of the business. So they've always had inputs coming from, from products, telling them you know, what needs to be launched and what the characteristics of that are, and, 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 and from the sales guys saying, you know, this is the sort of material that I need to be able to engage with our customers. And marketing have kind of sat in the middle there, pushing all of that information out to the end consumer. Now, that's no different today, but what is changing is that marketing are having to deal with an increasing number of outputs. So you've only got to walk around the, uh, um, uh, the conference halls here today and, and see that everything is very much about how do we use digital channels? How do we analyze what customers are doing on our websites? How do we push out email marketing? How do we use social media to engage with, with our end consumer? 
and and marketing are having to to do more of that stuff to put their messaging out through through more and, and more complicated channels and 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 they're also having to replicate then that that information that messaging maybe it's across their their reseller network maybe it's across local markets around the world but but managing those additional channels and, and ways of communicating and, and marketing across multiple different areas means that then you know you kind of got to still keep that brand control but you've got to give your local markets the ability to localize that content and, and make it relevant within their own environment um, and, and, and make sure that that is distributed effectively through the right channels. Now, that's a lot to do in an environment where we're all under budgetary pe pressures. Everybody's being told, you know, you've got to do more for less. We can't have more people doing these things. So it puts the pressure on marketing to have to work in a smarter way. And, and whilst that's happening, and we've got an increase in the number of outputs, you know, by the way, then we're having more intelligent conversations with the end consumer. It's a two-way thing now with social channels. So that information is then feeding back in. And, and not only have marketing got to manage that, they've got to make sense of it. And they've got to say, what's working in terms of the marketing that we're doing today? How is that influencing our customers? How are they responding to it? And then they've got to evolve that for the next campaign or, or the next calendar year or, or whatever it might be. And, and managing all of that stuff is, is very complicated from, from a marketing perspective, especially when there's less money and, and less resource going on. So it's a really exciting time for marketing as, as a whole. And there's a great opportunity there to really become the forefront of the business and, and, and to really help drive that forward and, and shape that. So, with that, that expansion in, in the role of marketing as, as, a business, uh, as a business operations, that comes with its own challenges, you know? So there's this pressure to, to be able to work smarter. There's, you know, this global marketing audience, the, the distributed nature of, of a marketing environment today. And then there's maybe local agencies around the world that want to influence the creative. So when they get a global toolkit or a centralized material, then People throughout that process of, of marketing, uh, marketing production want to influence the brand and want to influence the creative and, and the messaging within that. And, and in, in turn, you know, we, we have a much more complex environment in terms of those additional channels that then we have to be able to, to plan around that and to manage all of the tasks within that effectively. So that's a lot to take on. Um, and, and you know, the effective sharing and, and, and management of marketing materials, it's absolutely critical to playing this role of becoming the powerhouse of the organization. So where does technology fit into that then? How does it help them overcome these issues and, and get better visibility and, and control? You know, I talked earlier about this thing called MRM. Uh, what does that mean? I think it's, it's right now a very confused term within the market. I think lots of people have slightly different understanding of, of actually what marketing resource management software is. But quite simply, it's a technology to help manage increasingly complex marketing operations. Um, and if we think about the marketing life cycle, some of you that maybe were here yesterday might have seen this on, on the Brandmaker stand, but, but if we think about the marketing life cycle and how it works, you know, whether that's an annual period or, or whether it's a particular campaign, it, it tends to follow a, a common pattern. So you know, we start with our best laid plans at the beginning of the year. Sometimes those change along the way. Um, and, and, and budgeting, and then we go into this period of, of creative thinking and working with the lead agencies and, and moving through to creating toolkits and pushing those out to, to maybe our local markets and making sure that those are distributed through the right channels and adapted in the right ways. And then once we, we've, we've done all of that, we can, we can start to look at how have we performed and analyze the information that we have. So that's all well and good, but how does this thing, marketing resource management, relate to that, that, what is that life cycle? So you see, we have the life cycle in the middle here, and what marketing resource management software does is, is puts a technology wrap around that. So it, it, um, it manages the end-to-end -end life cycle. So we start with you know, moving clients away from the number of times clients have said to me, Emily, you know, I, I find it so hard to be working with 
15 different Excel spreadsheets, maybe that are coming in from my markets all around the world, and they've all added their own columns or their own rows or little bits of data. And, and it's really hard then for me to use that as management information to report on, to take to my boss, to say, OK, here's a clear view of what's happening in terms of our planning around the world. So bringing that within an online environment and helping people to understand how they can make sense of that and, and, and reporting on it in a single consistent view that gives everybody visibility of what's happening and when it's happening. And then once we can see those plans, we can share them, then it's about, OK, if we're going to then execute our, our marketing campaign, we're going to create some materials, we might want to manage our workflow through, through, through the software. So we might want to, to review artwork within an online environment. We might want to manage the approvals process. Maybe it's a legal approval that is required and needs to, be, um, needs to have an audit trail behind it. So, so as we follow through this life cycle, each of those modules of, of the software helps them bring that, to the, bring that together. And what that means from a marketing perspective is, is that once we have all of that information within an online environment, then we can start to really learn from it, start to drive insights about how are we doing as a marketing team, you know, which channels are performing better, what bits of, 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 um, of our marketing processes can we improve, where should we next year then reallocate more of our budget to. And, and, and so it's really about giving marketers the ability to manage what is an increasingly complicated uh, operation that that has to be controlled. And so by having this organization, this visibility and control, then it becomes possible for, for marketers to take on more, to work smarter, and to, to be more efficient in, in the way that they execute. So that's all very well and good, but it's kind of theoretical. So, so what Paul's here to do today is, is to talk to you a little bit about Volvo and how they've used this, this marketing resource management software to help them overcome some of their, their real business challenges. Paul. Emma, thank you. Um, I think the Volvo experience is probably one a lot of client companies could recognize, the start of this particular MRM journey. Um, the system solution, the technology solution we had in place prior to the current one had been in place for around 10 years. So we had that uh, perfect storm of old, outdated technology that was costing us too much. In addition, it wasn't as flexible as, as we would have liked it to be or we needed it to be. So inevitably, if there's the lack of flexibility over a period of time, a couple of things can happen. Functions within Volvo, after sales, public affairs, CRM, started develop, to develop shadow solutions because they felt that the central solution wasn't meeting their full needs. At the same time, markets were looking at how it was meeting their needs, and they also found in a number of cases that they, they wanted to have an alternative solution locally. So what that delivered over time was a lot of duplication, a lot of inefficiency, and all of that was happening over a period of time just at the point when Volvo was looking to be more centralized. As a global car business, we wanted to have greater coherency of the brand globally and greater oversight of our marketing globally and be more efficient in the way we go to market. And of course, the MRM solution we had didn't enable us to do that. And so you talked there, Paul, a little bit about centralization. Can, can we have a little look at what that really means in terms of how you use this platform on, on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes. Okay, the, the backdrop to this then would be um, that, that, that centralized um, scenario was, was working in a number of ways. Um, we had more markets because if you think of the emerging markets over the last 10 years, the growth in East Central Europe, the growth in Asia Pacific, the growth for Volvo as a Chinese owned company in China, and the growth in South America as well, suddenly we had more markets on the radar than we had 10 years ago. Those markets bring greater variety, greater complexity. And as emerging markets, they're especially lean and mean. So they're markets that probably need more support and more guidance from a, an MRM solution. As Emma, and Emily, as you were saying, um, the proliferation of channels means that we're doing more. We've got more channels, more touch points with consumers. 
Um, that's exacerbated by the fact that social media requires a greater and quicker return of serve. So we're doing more, we have to be quicker, we've got greater complexity across markets. And if we're lucky, it's delivering more from the same. But I think we all know in the current economic climate, and certainly the Volvo experience has been over the last few years, it's been uh, more from less. And you've got to be even more accountable for how you're using the budgets that you've got. So we needed a, sol a new solution that was able to galvanize all those different aspects, the complexity on the market side. And another layer there would be dealer marketing as well. When, when we're working with the markets, a lot of them had developed local solutions that also enabled their dealers to have sight of the system. So you know, one important point, which I'm sure we'll come back to, is working with the stakeholder groups as we had markets that had maybe got a more sophisticated solution. The central solution obviously had to deliver what they needed, plus a whole lot more. So the, the system gives us, on, as a, a more centralized, more globally focused company, greater oversight of what we're doing. It gives us the ability to have that speed to market. We have, you know, it's effectively, it's a, it's a linear process now. Um, with central development of, of assets, that's an extra layer in there that the, the markets didn't have before. If they've got to get, be to market more quickly than before, the system better enable them to do that. So, you know, th there was a need to come up with a, a 21st century solution and then we had to have a process to deliver that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, for, for, Vol for Volvo and for, for automotives in, in general, it's, it's a very complicated distributed marketing environment because you've got this kind of global central team that's pushing out marketing materials and, and, and plans and having to share those with regions around the world with the national sales companies in each market, and then with again an extended, um, uh, an extended arm of Volvo, which is those dealerships, the, which there are many within within each of, of the national sales companies, and 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 managing that whole process is is very difficult. Was very difficult for for Volvo because it's so hard to get sight of of what's happening and 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 what what it what the platform now enables Volvo to do is set expectations. So give the national sales companies, the dealerships, sight of when they can start to receive global toolkits. You know, what campaigns are going to run and when. And, and, and then once, once the national sales companies, the dealerships can see that, it, it stops what was happening before, which was you know, local markets and dealerships producing their own materials. So it means then that, that the toolkits that are pushed out from a central perspective are actually used within the markets. And, and then the central team can, can understand which bits of that toolkit are really being used um, and make sure that the things that they're producing in future are those that are most valuable to the people that are pushing this marketing material out to the end consumer. Um, and, and likewise, that flows through, down through to the dealerships. So the dealerships obviously are a fairly fundamental uh, aspect to, to the sales of, of, of Volvo cars. Um, and, and they can now access branded content. They can adapt that content through the platforms. They can personalize it. They can maybe change the color of the car. They can add their own dealership address details and, and different offers. Um, and, and, and that means that not only do they have branded content that they can generate easily, it actually means that, that the share of voice within the market for Volvo becomes greater because the dealerships can do more marketing without spending more money. Um, so they have the capabilities within the platform form to do that um, and, and feedback requests. So I think, you know, if there are the, the, the sort of change in, in that environment for you, Paul, I think brings a number of benefits to the Volvo organization. Do you want to just talk the guys through maybe what some of those are? Absolutely. Sure. In terms of benefits, uh, it's a bit of a cliche, but we do now have a 21st century solution, a state-of-the-art solution. And the, the other good news is, in terms of that accountability, it's costing us a lot less than the previous solution. Um, which is very important when budgets are tighter and accountability is greater. Um, I talked about the lack of flexibility in the previous solution which caused all the shadow systems. The beauty of the new solution is it is much more flexible. You know, you only need to go around a show like this to see 
some of the have a window into the future. Um, what we do know is we don't know what we're going to get, and, we, and it's going to be here quicker than we imagined it would be. So we feel reassured that you know we can engage with our markets in an ever-changing, dynamic world. We'll have a an infrastructure and a system that will enable us to be flexible in that in that environment. And <clears throat> as a global organisation, we have a central team, <clears throat> excuse me, looking out, and a, a global organisation looking in. And, and, and a, a real benefit is the oversight that we have over our marketing process. So from the centre, we have this single system. We have this single overview, so we can see what markets are doing in terms of their plans. We can check our efficiency in terms of asset development. We can look at take rates for assets and hopefully there's a process of continuous improvement where from toolkit to toolkit, from campaign to campaign, from year to year, we're really refining asset development against usage. So one, the assets are there that people need and we've not got wasted assets that we've spent time and money developing. And again, that whole accountability to the market so they're not saying, this is great, but I'm missing X, Y, and Z. Well, to people in the centre saying, why have you produced ABC? No one seems to want to utilise those. It's a much more efficient um, system. And I think the, the other thing that we've, we're finally getting to, which has been a, an ambition of us as an organisation, certainly as a central team, is not only to have that efficient infrastructure, but it's to encourage markets to look what other markets are doing. So we've now got, if you like, a, a clearinghouse for best practice. So they can all see what's available centrally. They have a system that enables them to transcreate and deliver that at a national sales company level and at a dealer level. But they can also see what's worked and what's available from other markets. So we've, we've really, you know, breaking down that principle of reinventing the wheel. Two or, three, two or three markets running a similar campaign from a central asset where actually they could have you know, compared notes, both in terms of what's produced, but how effective that's been um, in implementation. So, you know, really all of those add up to a, a great way to benefits for us as a company. Brilliant, brilliant, thank you. And I think, you know, we were talking, as, again, as, as we were preparing for these things, we were talking between ourselves about, okay, you know, from, from my experience with, with running a number of these implementations before and Paul's experience of, of being involved in, in the, the implementation for Volvo, what do we think really are the characteristics of, of successfully implementing one of these systems? What, what kind of, you know, what, what are the keys to, to that success? And, and one of the most important things, and I realize it, it may sound reasonably obvious, but, but one of the most important things is, is to talk to your user base. You know, I think um, you know, we've involved with, with Paul's project, we've involved people at a national sales company level, at a dealership level, we've got them all to input. Um, their, their, how their, how their um, kind of ways of working are today and, and what would make their life easier if we were to go down this journey of, of implementing this platform for them. Um, and, and, and another thing that, that kind of aligns with that is okay, talk to your users, but also make sure that you've got the right level of senior support internally because any period of change that impacts um, you know, multiple different people and multiple different parts of the organization comes with a degree of sometimes complexity, sometimes politics, I think it would be fair to say, and, and, and making sure that you have the right backing internal to the organization is really important in helping you to, to kind of push that forward. Um, the other thing to say is, is make sure that when you start on this journey, you have a very clear set of, of realistic goals. You know, for, for you as a, as a team, as a, as a business, what are you really trying to achieve? What do you want to get out? And it might be about you know, reducing budgets, as we talked about earlier. It might be about getting things out to market quicker. Or it might be on a more granular level of, of reducing the, the cycle of amends that you have in creating your artwork. Whatever it is, make sure you really know what that is out front and, and get buy-in from those senior stakeholders to, to agree that that's what we're all trying to achieve here. And I think, you know, setting realistic timelines for, for these sorts of rollouts is also really important. And it's, it's down to a, a vendor and a supplier that you're working with to, to help you do that. But it's also important that you look at what's going on within the business at that time. And are there critical periods for you? You know, for, for an automotive brand, it's very much about, you know, the, the big motor shows and, and making sure that, that we protect that kind of environment as, as a core activity in the annual calendar. Um, 
you know, don't do it all at once. We looked at a lot of stuff here. You know, when we talked about that wheel, there's a lot of different facets to, to marketing resource management, and, and you can't possibly make that jump all at once. So it's a journey. Make sure you phase things. Give the users access to, to new tools and capabilities on a on a step by step basis. Um, um, Making sure that you have a, a kind of strong and a united project team is, is really important. Having the right representation from the different areas of, of the business. And, and that's about marketing. But it's also about, you know, if you've got an IT team, bringing somebody in from that, from, from that function to support you and, and align with you. Um, defining requirements and sticking to them. It's very easy with these things as, as you kind of go through the process to think, oh, well, this would be nice. It's part of human nature. You know, we, we're always looking for change and, and to push ourselves forward, but, but kind of know what you want and make sure that you get there and, and then evolve it over time. Um, I think, you know, quite often clients come to me and they say, I really want to get better reporting. You know, I, I want to have better visibility of what's going on in the organization. And, I, and I, I, I want all of this information to come out of the platform. But until you start working with it, until you start using it, it's very difficult to, to kind of define what, those, what you absolutely are going to use those reports for. So, so maybe put that as a later phase, a later step of, of your rollout. Start using it, live with it, understand what information you can really get out of it, and, and then implement that and, and make that happen. Um, and, and last but not least, because that's generally where it always comes, is the business change activities. So talking to users, communicating with them, training, setting expectations, making visibility internal to the organization of, of what you're doing and when things are happening is, is really important to take your user base on a journey and help them understand, well, how will this project help me? Um, and, and once you've done that, then it will help you in turn drive better user adoption once, once you launch the, the platform.